So you're preparing for your visa interview and you're super excited about this upcoming trip to the United States. Maybe you're finally going to study here after planning and preparing for so long. Maybe you're finally taking that vacation that you've been excited about for so long. Or maybe you have a crucial business meeting that you absolutely can't miss. And so you're starting to think about the visa application and the visa interview, and you want to make sure you get that visa approved. So the thought comes into your head, maybe I should massage some facts around my past or my current living situation. Maybe I should lie about my salary or the job that I have, because that's how I'm going to get my visa. Is this a good idea? Of course not. Lying is never a good idea, especially in the visa process. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about why the truth matters so much in the visa application and the visa interview. I might scare you just a little bit about what might happen if you're caught in a lie. And for that, I apologize. But I will also give you some tips to make sure you're putting your best foot forward. Hi, I'm Travis. I'm a former career diplomat with the U.S. State Department. I spent almost seven years, the majority of which was abroad, and during that time, I interviewed over 80,000 visa applicants from all over the world. I am also a licensed U.S. immigration attorney, and my focus now is to help visa applicants prepare for their visa interview. So let's talk about the truth today and why it matters so much in the visa process. So back to your considerations about maybe massaging some facts to qualify for your visa. I'll put a link in the section below to the overview that we posted recently of 214B. 214B is the legal justification that the majority of visa denials are given. The justification is essentially that um, until you convince a visa officer that you qualify for a visa, you don't qualify and you're going to be denied. And as I overviewed in the 214B video, one of the key considerations is whether you have sufficient ties to your home country. And what that essentially means is, are you going to be pulled back after your stay in the United States due to some reason, whether it's family, social, uh, your job, your school, or are you more likely to just remain in the United States in violation of your visa? And so if you look online and you've done any degree of research into the visa process, you've probably seen multiple message boards and chat groups and other pieces of advice that say you have to have traveled before. You have to have a high paying job. You can't have relatives in the United States and so on if you hope to qualify for a visa. This is not true. The most important part of the visa process is the interview. And in that interview, the most important part, the most important consideration is whether or not you're telling the truth and you're credible. That's precisely why the United States requires an in-person interview with a visa officer. It's so the visa officer can quite simply look the applicant in their eye as they ask questions and then evaluate how the applicant responds. Is this a credible individual that's telling the truth and can be trusted to comply with the visa that they're applying for? Or is this somebody that's hiding something or maybe lying about something? Now, I will also put a link below to an overview that we posted around some of the facts, some of the data that visa officers may have access to as you approach the visa window, as well as some considerations and thoughts that might go through that officer's head as you approach. Now, in a nutshell, visa officers have access to a wealth of details as you're approaching the window. They can look at all of your detailed responses to the application form, the DS-160. They have access to some criminal history, previous travel, uh, and even more information. And so if your plan is to hide something that you think might be problematic in your past, or maybe misrepresent something about your current circumstance, maybe your salary, how long you've been employed, whether you own a house, chances are the visa officer already has the truth in front of them. And if they don't, if you give the officer any reason to doubt what you're saying, they have 
a wide ranging capability to investigate your responses. The officer can pretty easily verify employment details by calling your employer and by checking other sources of information. And so if you lie about your salary or how long you've been employed or where you work, chances are pretty good the visa officer will realize that you're lying. And so let's talk a little bit about what happens if you get caught in a lie. And this is where it can get a little bit scary. Now, best case scenario, if you get caught lying to a visa officer or lying in your DS-160 application form, is that you will simply be refused pursuant to 214B. Now, if you're refused pursuant to 214B, you can reapply at any time. But remember that previous case notes, previous notes that the visa officer types in from your interview will be available to the next visa officer and any previous refusals will also be noted in your system. Now, the more refusals you get, the harder it might become to qualify for a visa in the future. So it's always important to try to avoid that first refusal if you can. Now, worst case scenario is you get something much more scary, uh, much more harsh than 214B. And what I'm referring to specifically is section 212A6C1 from the Immigration and Naturalization Act. Now, you may have heard about this referred to either from visa officers or immigration attorneys as simply 6C1. What 6C1 says is if a, if a visa applicant lies to obtain their visa, they will be found inadmissible. Now, that's the key word there, inadmissible. What that actually means in practice is that you are now subject to a permanent punishment, a permanent ineligibility or prohibition from ever getting another visa and from ever entering the United States. Quite frankly, 6C1 is a red flag that appears in your file in the immigration system. It's visible not only by the State Department, but by other immigration agencies. So any visa that you may still have in your passport will likely be canceled. And if you do make it to a port of entry into the country, you will likely be turned around and prohibited from entering. Now, again, this is a lifetime punishment. So from that one lie that you got caught in, in passing to the officer, you are now subject to a lifetime of trouble a lifetime of not attending school in the United States, not traveling to the United States for a vacation, not attending that important business meeting. And so it's quite simply not worth it. Now, if you've done your research, you may have uncovered what is commonly referred to as a waiver of 6C1. Now, this is a possibility. What a waiver is, is the State Department's determination generally only temporarily for one visa application, that for some reason, for some set of facts or circumstances, you qualify for a waiver of this permanent punishment, this permanent ineligibility. And that means that the State Department can issue your visa, but only this one time. Now, in practice, waivers are anything but guaranteed. You should never assume that you can simply get a waiver of this punishment and qualify for a visa in the future. In all but very, very limited edge cases, there is no waiver for a green card. So if you have this 6C1 ineligibility on your file, chances are pretty good that you will never qualify for a green card. And then even if you qualify for a waiver, the process can take months. And so if you're trying to get a visa for that important business meeting or that vacation you've been planning, chances are pretty good that you're going to end up having to delay your plans. And that's only if you can get somebody convinced to request a waiver on your behalf. So again, the best piece of advice anybody in this industry can give a visa applicant is to always tell the truth. Now, let's look at where this might get a little bit complicated and that's in the DS-160 form itself. 
Now, in many parts of the world, it's common practice to hire a visa agency to fill the DS-160 form out for you. And this can be really useful, you know, particularly if you don't have access to a computer or maybe stable internet, or maybe you just don't want to spend the roughly 60 minutes or more it might take to fill this form out. Now, the problem that many folks encounter is the visa agent will be in a hurry. They're trying to fill as many of these out as they possibly can. So they might omit some key details. They might uh, you know, make a mistake. They may input somebody else's details into your form or vice versa. And if you don't take the time to review the, the responses to the DS-160 questions, you may actually be submitting false misrepresentations in the visa application. Now, I've seen this play out many times in my personal career as a visa officer, where somebody approaches my window, I review the DS-160 that they've given me, and maybe it says that they have no relatives in the United States, even though my computer system clearly says that they do. Maybe it says that the applicant has never been arrested, but I have clear confirmation that they have been arrested. Well, right from the very beginning, that applicant is now on the back foot. I'm already assuming that they're going to be less than trustworthy, less than credible. I'm probably not going to issue their visa. And I'm already thinking about whether I should apply this permanent ineligibility, this 6C1 punishment to this applicant. So again, it's always best to review the responses on that DS-160 form before it's submitted. Now, the most crucial part of the entire process is always the interview itself. Now, a lot of people have details in their past or maybe details from their current life that are less than glamorous. Instead of covering those up, instead of trying to hide the facts from the officer or maybe outright lie about them, it's always best to be upfront to come clean, as we say in the United States. Be honest, present the truth, but be positive about it. Explain your circumstance and try your best to convince the officer that you're a trustworthy person who qualifies for this visa. Now, this is where ZF Visa and Immigration can come into play. We're a team of former visa officers and licensed immigration attorneys who are laser focused on preparing visa applicants for this process. Schedule a consultation with us. Reach out to us at info at zfvisa.com or visit our website at zfvisa.com. And in that initial consultation, we'll take the time to get to know you, to understand your circumstances. And then we'll put together a strategic plan together to help you put your best foot forward. We may walk you through some sample interview questions. We may help you understand how to explain some complicated issues that you might be a little bit worried about as truthfully as possible and as detailed as possible. So reach out to us today. We're excited to help you prepare and above all else, tell the truth. Thanks and best of luck.